Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 93, Hudson, Wisconsin, Special Hockey, with Easton Schultz, presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Fedlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we dive into a feel-good story that will capture your heart and begin this conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, that I have the world's largest database of off-ice stick handling, passing, and hockey shooting drills, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person, off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's Sweet hockeycoach.com and watch the video on the home page for instructions. Thanks and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. This show is about Hudson, Wisconsin special hockey. But first, let me tell you how I arrived at this podcast episode. As you know, I do in-person off-ice stick skills lessons at my facility here in Minnesota. I was doing an onboarding call with a potential new player's mom where I get some background information answer any questions she may have, and then we look at the calendar and schedule the first lesson. This particular conversation was longer than most and ended up developing into this podcast episode, confirming it it was a go a day or two after my conversation with Jamie, the mom. I'm not going to give you much lead in on this episode, just know in advance that there might be a tear or two developing in your eyes by the end of this episode. Let me start by telling you a little story about the Schultz family, written by Jamie, the mother. My name is Jamie Schultz. My husband Carl and I have two boys, Easton and Ryland, who have both participated in the Hudson Hockey Association. Between the boys, they've been on a total of seven state championship teams, and each of them were on teams that earned a high school state championship. Some may think that that's the highlight of our Hudson Hockey experience, but our story goes much deeper than that. The state championships were great, don't get me wrong, but the best part of our story is how we got here to begin with and the unexpected path that led us to where we are today. When our oldest son Easton was four years old, he was diagnosed with sensory processing disorder. In a nutshell, he was hypersensitive to textures, loud noises, bright lights, and movement. His pediatrician, recommended we expose him to a variety of environments and activities with the hope that continued exposure would help him learn to adapt to his surroundings. At the time, we were relatively new to Hudson and didn't have family in the area, so the task of finding a variety of activities felt overwhelming. Shortly after Easton's diagnosis, we had a meeting with our insurance agent who, as luck would have it, was Karen Drewiski. When we told Karen what we were going through with Easton, she strongly encouraged us to consider putting Easton in the Learn to Skate program offered through Hudson Hockey Association. She spoke so highly not only of the Learn to Skate program, but also of the Hudson Hockey Association as a whole. We loved hearing about all the wonderful experiences it brought to her family, which was all the encouragement we needed to give it a try. Carl and I watched with nervous anticipation as Easton went on the ice for the first time. We expected him to last five minutes at most, but much to our surprise, he remained on the ice for the entire session. Even more shocking was that he was standing independently and even took his first few strides that day. From that moment on, he was hooked on hockey and the rest is history. Easton eventually outgrew sensory processing disorder and worked his way from mites all the way up to the high school varsity team. Oftentimes over the years, Carl and I reminisce about the impact that conversation with Karen had on our lives. Call it serendipity, if you will, but the fact that Easton's last game as a Hudson Raider resulted in his team winning a state championship under the direction of Karen's son, Davis Drewiski, is not lost on us. 
It was a full circle moment that our family cherishes deeply. I hope by sharing this background story, it helps you understand why, when Easton came to us with an idea to start a hockey program for athletes with special needs, we said yes without hesitation. This is where the best part of our Hudson hockey story begins. I'll let Easton take it from here. Thank you, Jamie. Well, if that doesn't pique some interest in you, I don't know what will. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. Please help me in welcoming Easton Schultz to the show. Easton, welcome to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me on here. Well, I kind of talked a little bit about it in the uh, in the intro here, but I, I was contacted by your mom because she was trying to learn some more information about getting your brother in for an in-person mm -hmm. uh, stick handling shooting lesson. Uh, mm -hmm. In our conversation, I told her I did a podcast. She told me your story, and I'm like, okay, let's have this guy on the show. So uh, I'd like to just go through the, the whole, uh, your short you know, you're not, you're in college, so you haven't been around, I'm 55, yep. you know, I got a little more, a little more <laughs> uh, tires on the trail. Uh, but let's just start at the beginning, you know, what was your childhood like? Because I know you had some challenges uh, early on at four years old, and your introduction to hockey and kind of climbing the ladder, and we'll just keep on progressing to where uh, you started Hudson uh, special hockey and a real special moment that happened this past uh, weekend that just kind of ties the whole show together. So, yeah. So um, I guess I wouldn't really know too much about um, what my parents are going through with um, kind of my sensory disorder. Um, I'm sure that was kind of frustrating for them. A lot of crying, um, a lot of late nights for them that I don't necessarily remember, but um you know, hockey was something that I have a ton of pictures of and that I always look back at that I just I just love. Hockey's been my life since I first stepped on the ice and one of my best friends, uh, Jack Conan, his dad, Ken Conan, who is the Hudson broadcaster for all of our high school hockey games and things like that. He taught me how to skate. So um, I just have a couple of pictures that I was looking back at the last couple of days reminiscing on you know, me with my hands up in the air with my little wild jersey on, um, just almost a sense of um, accomplishment that I was doing my own thing and I was having fun doing it. Because um, I think that was probably the first time for me and my parents that I was able to go out and do something that um, wasn't too much for me. Um, I was able to get me involved with my friends because a lot of my friends in my neighborhood growing up um, played hockey as well. So lots of Lots of street hockey, uh, lots of street hockey goalie attempts that ultimately got shut down um, by my parents. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm glad that I ended up playing defense. But, um, yeah. Can I ask you this? Yeah. That, uh, you know, when prior to you getting introduced to hockey, did mm -hmm. you have a – did? Were you kind of a, of a prisoner in your own home? I mean, did, did your parents talk yeah. about that? Um, just... Yeah. I was kind of, I was kind of like that. I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't super involved in a ton of sports. I mean, I was the first kid in my family to ever play hockey. So um, my dad played baseball, football, and like Elk Mound, kind of by Eau Claire. My mom was a gymnast cheerleader in Dakota City, Nebraska. So um, I tried like basketball and, you know, those sports like that, but ultimately were um, too overwhelming. And I just kind of honestly didn't enjoy them. Um, so that's kind of where I kind of didn't have a sport that I love to play and love to do. So I, I don't think that that <clears throat> necessarily helped either. Um, there was just not a lot for me to do. Um, so hockey was kind of a blessing and, and was able to get me out of the house and get find something that I was truly in love with before I even could re even remember it at this point. Is music something that helps with that that challenge? Yeah, um, I, I'd say so. I mean, I don't I don't remember too much about um, that challenge about the, the what I did to ultimately overcome it, other than hockey. Um, yeah. I'd say that um, hockey was by far the thing that influenced me the most to get over that, um, and honestly, pretty quickly. 
um, I was able to get over the that mental hurdle and that um, that disability ultimately really quickly because of hockey. So you had basically no recollection that you had to no, go through that. It no, just... I don't. I really don't have that much recollection. It was all the stories my parents told me of, you know, a lot of a lot of whining, a lot of crying, a lot of uh, just um, not a lot of things that they could do. Yeah. Um, ultimately making them feel almost a little bit, um, lost in, and where to go. Um, because that, I mean, that's something that as a parent, I don't know, but they've, they've expressed that that's, um, something that was difficult. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I mean, it's the, it's one thing if it's a, a friend or, but when it's a kid, <laughs> mm-hmm. right. That's a little that's a little different and you don't know that yet, but uh, yeah. for all of us, mom or dads, and you know, when you, when you can't help your child and uh, you, you don't know where to look and um, you know, you've kind of exhausted all of your options and there's, there's still, you just, your heart breaks for your kids. So yeah, uh, pretty cool that this Karen came yep. and uh, suggested that and you got in there. Yep. So as you, as you progressed and you know, things are, just normal. Um, how are you feeling about hockey? I mean, you're, you're going through it because there, there's a certain time you say you love it, but did, yeah. was there, a, was there a ceiling to how far you thought you could play? Yeah. Um, I mean, I still remember it to this day. Um, it was my peewee, my first year I would have been peewee a tryouts. Um, I've been working an awful lot over the summer, shooting pucks, in the driveway, you know, working really hard. Um, and the couple of years before that, uh, my next door neighbor was Ian McCoshin, who um, yeah. played in the NHL. Um, he was my next door neighbor for a while. And um, I watched him a lot growing up shooting pucks. So I, I honestly took a lot of what he did and tried to work on it my own, just out in the cul-de-sac shooting pucks. Um, he was kind of a role model at the start of my hockey career. So you um, dream, did you dream of playing in the NHL? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that was just always something that I wanted to do. I mean, um, but ultimately, um, my PBA year, I went to tryouts. I thought I had a great tryout, and I was one of three kids or four kids to get cut on the first day. Um, so, I mean, that was honestly a, honestly a shock to me. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't really know what to, what to think or what to do or – how I played wrong or, you know, I was like, just kind of questioning why I didn't make it to the second one, at least. I mean, maybe I would have been a bubble kid, but I was expecting to at least make the second day. Um, And so that was kind of a shock. I was really devastated. I had a lot of talks with my parents about, you know, what they thought I did wrong and they both were just equally as confused. Yeah. Um, And they didn't really know where to go. So I called um, one of my, uh, hockey coaches, uh, Mark Strobel. Um, and he coached for the Badgers until recently he coached at Ohio state. Um, he honestly gave me a lot of motivation, um, to never give up because at, until um, like at that point at night, I just remember just sitting right in front of the fireplace, talking to my parents for hours, not really knowing which direction I should go. I mean, is hockey really for me? Am I am I too small or am I just not having the right hockey skills? Do I not have it in me? Um, and basically he was just telling me that um, I can't give up. You know, there's you're going to hit adversity throughout your entire hockey career. Um, there's going to make be times where it doesn't make sense. There's going to be times where you probably shouldn't have lost a game or you shouldn't have been cut. But um, it really it really shows your true character that you keep going no matter, you know, the circumstances and what adversity you face. So I really took that to heart. Um, next weekend, I, I think I probably had one of the best routes of my life at Pee Pee Wee B. Um, but I, I made the team, uh, I had a great season, great coaching staff, um, a ton of fun with all of those guys. And, uh, you know, after that tryout where I got cut on the first day, I never made a team less than a or varsity for the rest of my career. So it was kind of a point where I could have probably given up and I felt like I wanted to, but I ultimately decided that, you know, I, I'm going to have some better character than that. I love hockey and I I don't want to give up and ultimately um, manifested that. And 
continue playing at a high level for the rest of my career. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I've been doing the podcast here for for over a year now. I started mm-hmm. in October over a year ago. And um, it's just so consistent with everyone that I talk to. Not Because I've had some non-hockey people on here too, mm-hmm. but there always seems to be a point in time in a person's life uh, growing up in their childhood. And you and I were right around the same time. You said Pee Wee when Strobel yeah. came into your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that. That was the uh, same with me. My parents got divorced. I was living at my grandparents' house, and it was a summer hockey camp I was at. And a guy said something to me. He says, "You're the best backward skater in this camp." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I, backward skating was my jam from that point on. And yeah, it totally changed. It, it changed my trajectory. So pretty cool how that did that for you. Mm-hmm. And you got that shot of adrenaline and. Sometimes that's almost a blessing um, when you don't make that top team and you might have been like a mid-level or lower-level player on that team, but you're the top guy on the B, and then all of a sudden you get your – you get you learn how to be a leader. You have the puck in your stick all the time, and your confidence grows. So you start getting some confidence there. What happens after that, and when did you win your first state hockey tournament? I won. It was my um, first year of Banamay is when I won my first one. It was the smallest team. I don't. I think that's probably ever won a state championship. We won with nine guys. Oh no! Way. So, um, yep, we had four D and five forwards when we won the state championship. We had uh, two guys go down uh, with injuries and a goalie. So ten ten guy ten guy team basically, including the goalie. Um, but um, really, really tight knit group. I had probably the most in shape I've been in my entire life. Um, so I, I remember the, the bag skate practices. Um, there wasn't a lot of off time cause there was only, you know, 10 of us skating down and up. So Herbie's was five and five and no breaks, but um, yeah, that was when I won the first one. And I think, I think what made that team really special is that there was the whole year, there was bigger teams um, faster teams, but we ultimately were the most in shape and the most conditioned to the closest group. Um, and I'm still friends with a lot of those guys today. So, um, it was just, a it was a really special team to be a part of. And it was, it was really fun to win with, you know, that small of a group because, you know, we had to work really hard for it. It sounds like when, uh, the small schools, come down for the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament mm-hmm. up in War Road, Grand Rapids, um, Rosso. Uh, mm-hmm. They come down with these small number of teams, and mm-hmm. sometimes they just they rule the roost. So it is. It doesn't matter uh, how big the dog is, just how much you know bark and bite is in the dog. Yeah. So here you are, Bams. You're flying high, mm-hmm. won a state championship. Yeah, uh, you know, are where are you at uh, as far as doing extra stuff to, you know, try to get closer to you know getting a, a junior opportunity, maybe in the North American League or yeah. uh, USHL and college. Where what where were you on that and USA Hockey with the, the end of the season stuff? Yeah, so I did. I started practicing with the Minnesota Blades. Um, so, um, I never really tried out, but I was friends with, you know, Isaac Howard at the time. Um, and he, um, just got drafted to the Tampa Bay lightning last year in the first round. He was their, he was their first round pick, but, um, his family, um, was able to help me just get a practice spot, which honestly I was pretty stoked about because that's a pretty good program. Um, and it was, you know, uh, just a blast just going out there with guys who obviously, I mean, they're, they're all even better than I was and they were a year younger. Um, and the coaching was something that um, was, you know, really prestigious, really good coaching. I learned a ton um, practice all the time with them. Um, I kept doing a lot of camps um, just, just to try and keep, you know, playing hockey, but um, ultimately um, didn't go too far um, in the route you know, looking at juniors and things like that. Um, but, you know, practicing with the blades was probably something that um, was, a, it was a humbling and also like very cool learning experience. Um, 
because a, a lot of those guys play at like you know your Edinas, your Maple Groves, um, you know Wyzetta, things like that. Um, and I just you know played at a you know Hudson, Wisconsin, right across the border. Um, yeah. Team that I thought was pretty good, but then I went over there. And I'm like, no, you know maybe we got a little bit of ways to go. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I headed. Um, and then am I to finish up Bantams? We lost to a team that I'd never lost to to go to state Eau Claire. Um, so that ultimately, you know, it was kind of a sour, sour taste in my mouth. Um, ended up losing to them, but there was a tournament, uh, after that where we played our rival superior. And, um, this was, this was, you know, ultimately in my last game in Bantams, my second year. And there was a there was a little scruffle going on in the in the corner. So one of my guys and I was captain at the time. One of my guys was trying to fight another one. So I, you know, skated in there. I was pulling him back. I'm like, you know, get your head right. Let's go. Um, ultimately, got a, you know, five and a ten in a game misconduct um, oh, no. for. Uh, I think the penalty was called third man in. Yeah, something like that. So um, I got. Uh, you know, that penalty for trying to take my guy out of a fight and <laughs> ultimately got benched and well, not benched, but, you know, sat watching yeah. my team play my final Banamay game. Yeah. So I left, I left association hockey with a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Um, going into high school, a little bit of like, well, that kind of was a crappy way to end it. Yeah. Um, but I was really looking forward to, you know, high school because at the time, uh, Brooks Lockwood was our head coach. He, you know, the year right before um, I was going to be in high school, he'd won, you know, back-to-back state championships. Um, so our team had been, you know, kind of on a heater, uh, our high school team at least, you know, right before I joined. Um, so I was just kind of looking forward to moving on to high school. Yeah. So interesting, the, the connections, because mm-hmm. – I coached with the Blades, Minnesota Blades, for mm-hmm. like 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. coached, uh, my kids grew up playing in the YZ program over here. Uh-huh. And uh, when I was coaching the Blades, it's funny that you said practice player because I always had a couple practice players. Mm-hmm. And every single year uh, that, that I did that, every one of those practice players at least became – uh, a part-time, you know, game player, tournament yep. player, or a full-time mm-hmm. player uh, the following year. And, yeah. and you know, um, it's – it's a lot of times kids just want an opportunity, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Just, just give me a shot. Yeah. Um, and that's what I always did, and I think everyone that I did do that for and the rest of the coaches, that uh, they were very grateful for that opportunity. Yeah, so, I mean – Let's transition to the high school now. And yeah. when does – is this when special – Hudson special hockey comes into play is when you get to high school or is it after yeah. high school? Yeah, so this is when it started. But I went through my first year of, you know, varsity hockey playing. Um, ended up – it was a pretty, pretty tight-knit team. I was, you know, on the team as like a fifth defenseman. Um, so – I, I was, you know, how you rotate in there, you get a few shifts, a good amount of shifts a period, but uh, I was a defensive defenseman type of guy. I uh, like holding down the fort. I like blocking shots. I like the penalty kill. So that was kind of my role. I just kind of embraced that, um, yeah. that season. Um, I was just kind of a penalty kill guy. I was a scrappy guy who liked to, you know, block shots and play defense. So um, went that season, we beat, uh, we'd lost to Superior, who was our rival, twice during the regular season at home and in Superior. And in order to move on to the state, you know, state tournament, we had to beat them in Superior. Um, ended up going to triple overtime, uh, three to three. We scored the game winner, and you know, I think that was probably one of the most fun games I've been a part of. Ultimately, we lost at state, um, but I think that game alone was almost like winning winning something really special to me. Yeah. Um, but I was a multi-sport athlete, so I did track. Um, that, 
next year. Well, actually, it would have been my sophomore year, but uh, I played the cross that year, you know, played another full season of hockey, um, ended up uh, not making it to state that year for the first time, um, which, you know, it was a weird feeling. Our program had not been to state for probably, you know, five, six years. Yeah. So I think it was something where it was kind of a wake up call for the rest of us. And we were all extra motivated to, you know, begin, you know, summer workouts, practicing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. I was looking to get back and start practicing with the blades again. And then during my track season, my sophomore year, I broke my collarbone running in the hundred meter dash. Oh no. So um, I was running, uh, ended up just probably tripping on my own feet and, and there goes my face and shoulder down on the down on the brand new track. So um, honestly, right when it happened, I didn't really know it. And I kind of like pushed myself up and I just felt just like a, you know, an unimaginable pain in my shoulder. I just I never felt anything like that. I haven't broken a bone a bone um, since that was the first time I've ever done it that I can remember. Yeah. Um, But that I mean breaking your collarbone right before you're starting to practice and get ready for the off season, you know, it was pretty devastating to me. Um, yeah. I was really upset that, you know, I had surgery. Uh, I had to have surgery cause it was so bad. Um, I think it was, you know, a four inch break. So it was like poking up pretty bad. Um, oh. but it was, it was a pretty brutal experience. Surgery was needed. So, you know, I'm thinking in my head that we just didn't make it to state. And I'm not going to have any off season training now for like, or at least to the caliber that I wanted to right? until at least July. Right. Cause I broke it in, in May. So I'm like, okay, well I need to have a couple months recovery and then get my strength back. I'm not really skating again till August, you know, competitively with the hitting and things like that. Um, so I was, I was pretty mad. Um, a little bit at myself and a little bit at just the situation that I'm in. Um, but, you know, I think that was kind of the changing point in the trajectory of where I um, wanted to, and what I want to accomplish in life. Um, so I started, you know, volunteering in my downtime with um, the Hudson bridge foundation. Um, it's a place where um you know, kids with disabilities go, they have caretakers there. They do events all day long. Um, it's really fun. I started volunteering there and, um, and how old you're, out, you're a high school. You're yeah, what, so I'm a sophomore. sophomore. I'm a sophomore in high school at this point. What, what sophomore in high school goes and volunteers on his own? How did you, what, what how did um, that happen? I was, I was talking to my parents about just, um, things I can be doing to, you know, better my resume and better myself. Yeah. Um, and they mentioned that there's opportunities there. So I'm like, all right, let's, you know, let's do it and see how it is. And I absolutely loved it. I yeah. mean, it was, it was so much fun, you know, going on all these activities, getting to put myself in uh, unique situations and meet uh, a lot of kids and adults who, who are really awesome, really awesome people and have great families. Uh, I ended up learning that uh, there was like a floor hockey uh, thing that they do every week at one of the uh, EP Rock Elementary and so I was like, well, they, we don't, they don't really have any volunteers or coaches that do it. There was just one. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing anything at that time anyways. I mean, I would be playing hockey, but I'm hurt, right? So I'm like, all right, well, let's go do that. So I signed up for that and started going every week. And it was, it was honestly one of the most fun things I've ever done. I mean, all these kids were super motivated, super, you know, fun to be around. They'd score and they would celebrate and It just it was just really unique to see like my perspective almost start to change about like what was really important to me Um, as like I've had a lot of I had a lot of success in my hockey career, but I never really had felt something, you know, that special and unique where I'm watching um, myself, you know, help contribute to other people's happiness like that. That's not a teammate where I just thought that was super unique. And I ultimately met Ian Witt there. Um, so Ian Wett was kind of my inspiration for the whole Hudson special hockey, but, uh, to give you a short, short version of it, um, I met Ian there. Ian was, I mean, Ian's a character. If you haven't met Ian, I mean, he 
is the most outgoing and fun and competitive, especially competitive individual I think you'll ever meet in your entire life. I mean, I'm sure you've been around some pretty competitive people, but I tell you, Ian's right up there with all of them. <laughs> um, I met his parents. I talked to him. They were looking for a PCA, so a personal care assistant to work with them over the summer. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you know, back to where my collarbone came in. I'm like, I'm not doing anything. I mean, why not give it a shot? Right. So it was Ian, uh, down syndrome. Is yep. That yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I started working for him. Uh, we spent the whole summer together. We, you know, play NHL in the basement. We, you know, played, you know, Frisbee, we'd go to the park basketball. And then I, you know, getting to know Ian better. He loves the wild. He loves hockey. Right. So I'm like, why don't we start doing that stuff? And then he's like, why? Well, I and mean, he kind of didn't know how, right. He's never really tried it other than floor hockey. I'm like, why not actually like go skate? Yeah. So I mentioned it to his parents. They're like, I don't know. Like we could, yeah. and I'm like, no, like why, well, why aren't we doing this? Like, let's try it. Right. Yeah. And um, so ultimately convince them uh, that I think they were a little skeptical. Maybe they won't admit it now with how much fun they've had with it. But um, <laughs> I think they were pretty skeptical um, on, you know, what his whole hockey experience would be, you know, because I don't really know too many uh, kids with disabilities that have had an opportunity to play um, with uh, more of their peers at school. Right. right. So I just started taking Ian to Stillwater uh, we skated at the open ice, you know, once or twice a week. Um, Cause at that point I could at least, you know, move around and get them to skate and teach them a little bit. Um, so we went, we practiced, we passed the puck, he skated around, um, tried, you know, working on how you pass the puck, you know, the basics. Um, and I mean, even though we were just passing back and forth from like 10 feet away, every time he got off the ice, he was just so pumped. I mean, I think he just felt like the biggest rock star ever because he was um, and still is. But um, he, he just kept practicing and practicing and practicing. And then ultimately, I was like, well, let's go get all your own gear. So we went to play it again. Um, we bought him, you know, all the gear for like, I don't know, 150 bucks uh, with his parents. And he was a hockey player. You know, he had his little Bauer bag and his own stick and tape and gloves and everything. So um, he was a hockey player, but ultimately that led me to think like, why isn't there more opportunities like this for kids with disabilities? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just kind of thought like, let's try and think of a way where we can be creative and make this happen for kids with disabilities. Um, because I think that, you know, you know, uh, spreading awareness and creating more opportunities for athletes with disabilities is super important in general. But specifically in the game of hockey with, you know, the way we're trying to grow the game, I think it's really important to, you know, allow everyone to have that opportunity. So, um, Absolutely. you know, I talked I talked to my parents um, trying to, you know, figure out what we could do. And we ultimately came down with, you know, let's start. Let's ask the rank about, you know, getting ice time and things like that to, you know, start a program. You know, like if they can donate us the ice. Um, once a week, uh, we'll get kids out. We'll use the equipment that we use for like mites, the spare equipment. We'll give it to them and we'll skate once a week. Um, so that started, um, in the midst, uh, or it was the end of my junior hockey season. Um, so I was able to go through, we had a pretty successful season, didn't win state again. Um, but uh, that team was super, super, super special because after the season was over and I started the program for the first time, every single one of the players helped volunteer. So, no um, wow. so um, the whole team was completely supportive of, you know, you know, that foundation and the goal and the mission that I was on to try and, you know, spread awareness and create opportunities. So um, the coaches, um, my hockey team, the Hudson Havoc team, which is the local team in town, also came out and were volunteering for just 13 kids at the time. Yeah. So we started my first season with 13 kids in a ragtag group of a ragtag uh, 
bunch of equipment that was upstairs and, you know, through whiskey arena. So, um, that's kind of where it started, but. Well, and now it's, you, it's an official yeah. nonprofit, right? I mean, yep. you've, you've yep. gotten, uh, you've gotten grants or, uh, yeah. to the tune of $20,000 from the NHL players association, yep. uh, the Hendrickson foundation. Talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, wrote and, you know, I got, honestly, my high school hockey coach, Davis Jewiski, um, who was Karen's son, led me to finding out about that NHL PA Goals and Dreams uh, Foundation um, scholarship or like grant. So yeah. he was the one who directed me to that, who was my high school hockey coach at the time. Um, and he uh, told me about that. I applied and I ended up winning that. And I think that was kind of the turning point in the program. Um being able to, you know, have enough quality equipment for the athletes that we were still at 13, but um, it was still good to have them in equipment that was going to be supportive to them. Um, And ultimately we saw growth to about, you know, from 13 guys, we grew to about 30 in one year. Wow. So that was, you know, pretty special. And we were able to use that equipment and grow the game really quickly. Um, and we even had, you know, two athletes who, uh, we were able to get a generous donation from a nonprofit called four dads. It's a group, I think out of river falls, Wisconsin, um, donated us, you know, two sleds for them to be able to play as well. So, um, it was just really cool to see how the community and surrounding communities and groups were, you know, bought into, um, my goal of seeing this, seeing this through. Um, so, I mean, that was, that was pretty special to be able to grow to 30. Um, and going into my senior year, I was kind of, you know, really looking to, you know, win a state championship again. Um, I mean, it's your senior year. You'd always want to go out on a high, right? So, um, went through, went through that season, um, ultimately ended up winning the state championship, but. I think the real blessing was, you know, what, you know, uh, special Hudson special hockey had become the year after I won the state championship. I don't know. I'd have to send you the picture, but there's a, there's a full picture of like the week after the state championship. We, we literally won the, we won two days before Hudson special hockey at practice and the entire team, that I was on came and we took pictures with everyone with the trophy. Um, It was, I mean, the kids were hoisting it. It was just a really fun moment where I realized that um, this just wasn't about me anymore. And it was just about uplifting others others and growing the game. I mean, that's kind of where I changed, completely changed thought um, about where I wanted to go with my hockey career and ultimately decided that, I mean, I was going to be done with it, but um, that I learned much more doing it the way I did it than um, I would have otherwise. Wow. I, if all the people listening out there don't have a little tear in their eye, eye right now, you might want to give yourself a little check to see if you got a heart. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Um, what, a, what a special person you are, dude. Uh, Thank you. And I mean, really cool how at the end of your junior year, when the whole team kind of said, we're jumping on board with you. And then Mm -hmm. that following season, you guys cap off your high school career with a state championship win. I'm sure you had a lot of your uh, special hockey players were over there uh, watching the state tournament win. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't, a lot of them watched it on TV. I got a lot of pictures. I got a lot of pictures of, cause that was COVID year. Mm. Um, so we won in the middle of COVID. So gotcha. that was like, um, they were pretty particular of who could go. Um, but, um, I got tons of pictures of, you know, the athletes and the members that were watching it at home. So, I mean, that, that was just a special to me. I mean, it was a time where no one really exactly could, do it exactly what they wanted, but it was still just as special to know that they are watching, you know, on TV, watching the guys who help 
you know, coach them and learn from them, um, you know, win a state championship. But I think that it's also really important to like note that this isn't just like an opportunity for like my teammates or like for the athletes to, you know, play hockey and my teammates to just volunteer. I think a lot of it's just a really cool learning experience for, um, you know, my, my teammates and myself to grow as a person, you know, with these athletes and understand that, you know, a lot of the things that we go through, you know, on a daily basis, you know, you know, a lot of the struggles that we, we face in our hockey careers, are, you know, so minuscule compared to some of the things that these families and parents and kids have had to go through their entire lives. So um, I think that it goes, it's a, it's a two way, it's a two way street where, you know, we're helping these athletes, you know, accomplish their goals and, you know, create opportunity and spread awareness, but they're also helping us, you know, grow as human beings and people and, you know, understand and, and humble ourselves a little bit about some of the things we may be going through. A little love, a little compassion, mm -hmm. a little understanding mm -hmm. uh, goes a long way. It does. So let's let's talk about uh, uh, a milestone, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, one of your athletes, Ian Witt, who's who's basically why you're here. Is, yep. You know exactly. Uh, I mean, he is why I'm here. I'll give him that. Uh, you know, talk. Talk about what happened to him this past weekend and how special of a moment that is for anyone connected with yeah. Hudson and special hockey. Yeah. I mean, Ian had played mites the couple of years prior, just for some background. He, he played mites in, you know, he was 14, 15, where he was a lot older than the kids in mites, but ability wise, he was pretty similar. So he yeah. was able to stay there, but then he ended up just outgrowing it. Right. And so the talks with his parents were, you know, where do we go from here? I don't really know, you know, what can we do? Can we even do anything? I mean, cause they were kind of just looking for anything that he could do. Right. So, you know, I kind of took it as like a mission to and find a way where he can be involved um, on a team still. So ended up Ian was able to, you know, play and practice with the uh, Bantam C team. Um, that was the coaches were my Bantam A coaches who um, were coaching that, you know, Bantam C team. So um, that was really cool too, that uh, I won a state championship with these coaches um, and they were able to allow uh, and let Ian practice and play. And um, so Ian, Ian was playing with the Hudson Bantam C team all season long um, and playing. I mean, he, he ended up scoring a goal this season and, you know, the team and everyone in the rink celebrated with him. It was just a really special moment for him to, especially not only to just get on the ice and play, you know, during the games, but, you know, just to score a goal. I mean, you, you realize just how, you know, one goal in one moment can make somebody's, you know, day, life, career. Um, yeah. And it was just a really special moment to see him score. Um and I talked a lot with um, some of the players. I ended up going to one of the practices, uh, watched Ian practice with the team and hang out. Um, and the coaches, there was just on Fox News that um, they did an interview with, you know, the coaches and his parents where, you know, the coaches talked a lot about how Ian's the heart and soul of the team. I mean, Ian always shows up to practice in a great mood. Uh, he was always happy to be on the ice. He loved playing hockey where um, I think a lot of times some teams run into issues where you hit slumps where you're unmotivated and you don't really know what to do. Maybe you're in a losing streak, but Ian always found a way to cheer up the locker room and keep the energy light. Um, and uh, all season long he played and then they made it to state. And to my, and to my knowledge, Ian's the first kid with disabilities in the state of Wisconsin and almost, I don't know, anywhere to play in a state tournament for hockey, to my knowledge. I'm not exactly sure, but in Wisconsin, I think he is. Um, which is, which is, you know, for me and how special of a kid Ian is, it, it's a heartwarming moment to where he deserved every little bit of that moment for him. Um, so he went to the state tournament and we were able to convince WIA uh, or to uh, let him play in the tournament. They were happy to let him play um 
And throughout the games, Ian was able to, you know, he got on the ice occasionally and his team made it to the championship. He uh, took the opening face off and his team ultimately was lifting the state championship trophy uh, with Ian. And he was on the ice with um, all of his really good friends who are, you know, genuine, nice, great kids who um, took Ian in as a friend, not just, um, not just a teammate, not, you know, someone who's just practicing, but someone who they cared about. And he was holding the banner, ended up taking the trophy home. I think it's going to be hard to get it into the trophy case at the rank. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just a, it's just a full circle moment where um, he, you know, gets to win a state championship. Um, and I, I would also go to, again, to assume that he's the first kid with, you know, down syndrome or a disability to win a state championship in hockey ever. So, you know, it's just, you know, it makes me very, you know, proud and happy for him uh, just because he's such a good kid and he, you know, has grown a lot in hockey. Um, and I think that uh, it's important to, you know, keep finding ways to include kids with disabilities in these things because it, it grows the game of hockey and it grows his teammates and everyone involved in it um, to really understand that it's, it's a bigger than yourself moment. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, get ready for a little Netflix movie maybe in the years down the yeah. road. <laughs> that would be awesome. So, uh, so you're, it's, uh, Hudson special hockey is still going strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. how can we, you know, I know you, the one thing that, uh, is required is a, a lot of, volunteers at mm -hmm. each of the sessions to help with everything. Absolutely. And I Absolutely. know you, you have a, a real strong uh, network locally there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put the website uh, link where you can find out some uh, emails to, to contact your mom, I believe is one of them. But mm -hmm. if someone can't volunteer and they just say, Hey, I want to help out there. There's ways to donate some uh, money over to you or mm -hmm. something that can help with whatever you guys do with the, with the athletes during your training sessions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a ton of, there's tons of ways to be involved volunteering. Uh, donations are always super helpful because, you know, I mentioned how we started with 13 and then we grew to 30 I mean, now we're up to 42 athletes. So we have 42 kids who are, you know, at hockey every single week. So um, I think it's just really important that if you want to get involved, you know, get involved. I mean, it's something that I can't, I can't say that. Um, or I don't even know where I was going with that, but I just, <laughs> I just, it's something that I feel like um, experiencing it, even if you find a way like in your, you know, wherever you're listening from to get involved in something like that, you should. I mean, there's tons of programs throughout the Twin Cities and things like that where um, try and just try and find a way to get involved because you won't regret it. I mean, it's it's something that, you know, truly is, you know, life altering and something that's really fun, you know, to just be involved. So um, I definitely recommend, you know, whether it's helping out Hudson Special Hockey or, you know, a special hockey program or um, any, you know, Special Olympics, things like that. Just try try and find a way to get involved or encourage it. Encourage people to get involved um, if you can. How how uh, common is this across the United States? I mean, are there other similar I mean, there's, you guys have? Yeah, so like throughout the Twin Cities, there's a bunch of teams. I mean, there's okay. like a there, – and there's like a – I don't even know how many programs, but – um, there's, a, there's practices in Woodbury, there's practices, uh, throughout Twin Cities Metro. Um, there's a tournament, uh, down in like St. Louis, I believe this year. Um, so it's out there. I just don't think the awareness is, right. um, there's, there's opportunities, but you know, in the last three, four years with the program, you can see that, you know, we started at 13, we're up to 42 and we're still growing where it's like, you know, every year that people raise awareness and talk about it and get the name and the word out, you're going to see a lot more people come to it because um, I think half the issue is just there's a ton of programs, but just lack of knowledge of them. Right. Well, my friend, you're uh, you're down at Iowa State. Yep. Uh, what, what year are you in college? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore. For, so you, 
man, you accomplished so much already as a, a young adult and uh, talk about uh, an inspiration for, for all of us that maybe feel a little selfish or <laughs> a little bit because that was a feel good story. And uh, I think that you brought tears to a lot of people's eyes, uh, but more importantly, uh, you definitely opened up some eyes and ears to, to what's out there that mm -hmm. maybe they were unaware of previously. So thank you for that. Yeah. I, I appreciate you, you know, letting me on here to, you know, get that message out there and talk a little bit about Ian and, you know, Ian and my journey and things like that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, like I said, I will put the link uh, to your page in, in the, the description. Uh, if there's anything that I can do, Easton, to help you um, with what you got going on uh, there in Hudson, please don't hesitate to ask. And just congratulations and thanks for, you know, making the game better than when you found it. Uh, yeah. It's a special story with just phenomenal messaging. And if I was your mom and dad, I'd give you a hug and I'd be really proud of you. Well done. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it very much. That You know, it's something that um, hockey is something that I love and I'll never stop loving the game. So um, finding ways to leave it better than I found it is, you know, something that I, I'm very proud that I was able to do. But I'm more proud about, you know, my community and the athletes who are, you know, actually getting to experience it. I think that's the real joy and everything that I've been able to do is see, you know, other people's happiness. So, um, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for letting me talk about it. Well, thanks for sharing it. And, uh, I, when I see your mom, uh, in the next week or so, I'll, uh, thank her as well for connecting the two of us because it was a perfect match. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, uh, you have a great rest of the winter. Um, thanks again for taking the time. And uh, don't hang up because I want to talk to you after we uh, stop the recording. But uh, just uh, best of luck. And like I said, if I can do anything to help you guys and what you got going on, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, thank you for uh, thanks for talking. All right. Until our paths crossed again. Have a great week. You as well. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the Schultz family hockey journey and how the Hudson Special Hockey Program was created. Click on the link in the description to learn more and how you can kick in a few dineros to help continue to grow the Hudson Special Hockey Program. Lastly, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon, and do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.